Now I realize they came up at a different time than many of you. You can call me old school if you want to, no offense. But here's the thing, with hybrid work environments, not only are you missing out on what could be valuable interactions with work colleagues, clients, vendors, and others at the office, you likely aren't building a network of people outside of work who are truly essential to building your career successfully. I regularly had lunches with people I wanted to get to know, sometimes just for my own professional purposes. I attended conferences, receptions, breakfasts, and talks hosted by companies and professional associations that were relevant to my work. And yes, my employer paid for nearly all of these activities because I stood to benefit their interests by finding clients, new employees, and learning about new industry trends, just for starters. So as I've said before, if you think showing up on a Zoom or Teams or whatever video platform and getting your work done is enough to keep you moving up the ladder, think again. You better lift your head up and connect to the rest of the world if you really want to be successful and have some fun while doing it. Hi, I'm Jenny Clark, a conscious leadership expert who spent two decades in executive recruiting and talent management, having worked with giants like Google and Spencer Stewart. I discovered that the secret to transformative leadership lies in the five dimensions of conscious leadership, and I'm here to help you unlock your full potential. Join me on this channel as we embark on an honest and vulnerable journey together to become the kind of leader that genuinely inspires transformation in your organization. I've got a little career boosting secret for you. Do you want the inside scoop on leadership plus some juicy tips and hot takes you won't hear anywhere else? I've got a newsletter that's basically your personal career coach in your inbox. Just click the link in the description to join in. Oh, and if you're loving this content, I know you are, click that subscribe button. It's like giving me a virtual fist bump, ensuring you won't miss out on any future videos. Many people view networking as cheap self-promotion or as seeking disingenuous alliances. Done poorly, it can be those things. Done well, it offers great benefits, not just for finding a job, but for gaining essential career insights and identifying business opportunities. Here are but a few of the benefits. Exposure to job opportunities and introductions to job influencers. Valuable impressions of your current skills gaps and attributes through the eyes of others. Advice on how to advance or effectively maneuver in your current position. Perspective on whether your goals and expectations are even realistic. References and recommendations that support your pursuit of new opportunities. So in terms of building a network, one of the biggest failings I see people make early in their career is not deliberately building a network of people who can support them throughout their career. Most people define their networks, if they even have given any thought to it at all, far too narrowly. Even the people who've paid attention to their networks over the years often make the mistake of focusing on just one or two of the types of people who should make up an active and supportive network. I'll help you think through each type of person who needs to be on your list, why they're on the list, what you need to ask of them, and how you need to approach them to build lasting, productive relationships. Here are the people who should be on your radar. References. These are people with whom you have worked closely in the past three to five years who can attest to specific professional competencies. A full list will include superiors, subordinates, and peers. And you always contact references in advance to make sure they are comfortable speaking about you in detail. Advise them on what to say about you. By that I mean let them know about the position so that they can customize their comments accordingly. When possible, let your references know the name, company, and title of the person or people who might be contacting them so they can respond quickly. Determine their preferred means of contact, phone or email. When you're giving a reference or someone, be as specific as possible about how the person performs or performed. Give examples. Don't just recite their resume and work history. The caller already knows that information. Coworkers. These are people with whom you work or have worked with regardless of the function and whom know you well enough to ask a favor of. They're acquaintances with whom you share or shared a common employer. Cultivating relationships with these people can give you access, leads, and or insight. Not sure who to get to know in this category? Well, here's some ideas. Consider reaching out to someone 
you went through a training class with but don't work with every day. Get to know people in groups or functions within your company that you might have an interest in moving into or want to learn more about. Participate in affinity groups or community-oriented events with coworkers as a way to increase visibility and find out about different opportunities within the company. Reach out to people who might benefit from knowing you, especially younger, more junior colleagues. Don't just build relationships up the food chain. You need to know people at all levels in your world. You never know when the executive assistant or research analyst can help you out of a tight spot. Their willingness to help you might be because of a relationship you've forged, not because of rank. Advisors, mentors, and sponsors. These are usually people who have insight or expertise that's relevant to your job, company, or industry that you seek to learn more about. They know you well professionally and personally and can give honest, unfiltered feedback to you and others on your performance, presentation style, and more. Stick to asking advisors, mentors, and sponsors very pointed questions or for advice on job strategies, specific companies, and the like. Consider a person at least one level higher than you and someone you don't report to. Don't wait for formal programs. Find your own mentor based on a mutual vibe you have with that person and their willingness and accessibility. Your current boss may be a great sponsor, but only after you've proven yourself worthy of him or her going out on a limb for you. Former or current professors can be great advisors. Since they know some of your intellectual capabilities and possible tendencies, they can give great feedback as to how well-suited you might be for a role or industry. And keep in mind, academics at the top of the heap often do consulting work with businesses and have excellent contacts and current valuable insights. Industry and functional experts. You don't have to know these people, but you can solicit their advice with targeted questions about how they see the current or future prospects for the industry and or function. They may even be able to offer opinions on your insights into some of your targeted companies. These people are especially valuable when you're trying to break into an industry or function you haven't previously worked in. Hey there, hope you enjoyed part one of the eight types of people you need in your network. Tune in next week for part two to get the rest of the list and start putting your list together so that you too can be an effective networker to build upon your career. See you soon.